The following is a presentation of Stewed Productions. Hey, this is Brian from Wicked Box of Brewing, and you are listening to Inner Brews. This is Interbrews. And we're off and rolling. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, TD Mike. Good morning. Another episode of Inner Brews, this Do time it. close to home. And I, Pretty I much po- backyard there. Yeah. Right here. Well, Brian, I apologize that I've been harassing you <laughs> no. nonstop <laughs> since before you opened. <laughs> you want to record now? Want to record now? I'm really close. I got all my mics right here. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm super excited that we're making it work in uh, your super busy schedule. And you got your assistant brewer over here. Absolutely. I got my summer intern. Yep. Mike, when are you having kids? Uh, <laughs> you have your free worker over here? Yeah. Me? Yeah. Oh, that's true. That's true. You're like my kid. That means get a job, son. Get a job. Get a job that pays. All right, Brian. Let's talk uh, Wicked Boxer. Cool. Um, I love your brewery. One, there is the proximity thing. I'll, I'll, you know, Mm -hmm. it helps. It helps helps. a lot. (laughs) Um, So you said February was your official grand opening. Yeah. So uh, the official date was December sixteenth of last year Mm -hmm. uh, because we were pushing to get open in twenty seventeen. February was our official grand opening that we had. So we had been open for a couple months, kind of working the kinks out, mm-hmm. um, and it it really helped. Yeah. You are doing what I would imagine a lot of people fantasize about when they get into home brewing and things like that. You've got, it's a, it's a kind of a neighborhood setting, small system, you're real nimble. How's that been going so far? Like, what, what size is your brew house? So we have a one barrel brew house. Okay. So for those that don't understand barrels, we're looking at two full size kegs for each brew day. Okay. So every batch of beer is its own brew day, and if it's a good batch and it goes quick, then I gotta make it again really fast. Yeah. Um. So how often are you brewing now? So I do at least twice a week. Okay. Um, I keep the staples on all the time, which is our our wiggle butt blonde our downtown Shiloh Brown, mm-hmm. and our Stealth Liquor IPA. So those three always have to be on. The other three taps, those will rotate Okay. as I have time. Yeah. Let me say this. The wiggle butt is excellent. Um, I think the two times ago, I think it, somebody came in and they all drank it all before I got here. Mm-mm. So, yeah. Uh, but the name wiggle butt, okay, so Wicked Boxer, obviously Boxer Dogs. And if you've ever been around a boxer, Mike, you've been around boxers? I have. I have. The way it's a little tail the wiggle butts yes yeah it's uh aptly named i guess but anyway delicious beer thank yes. you very much so <laughs> um <laughs> go for it man do it do it <laughs> hey don't look you need help <laughs> we got that's cool get up on the potty it's cool how, how, old, how old is your assistant brewer he's, he's four uh that is Ryder. he is four years old okay um he has milled grains he actually helped transfer beer today. Uh-huh. Um, he loves helping with the water. He nice. loves he loves the big water pots. Cool. So yeah, he's <laughs> he's all in. That's you know what that's um it's going to be interesting to see you know in a few years you know maybe from another sixteen or so but you know when that the we have so many brewers now like when their kids are coming up I mean right now you really kind of see I guess like Celis. Uh, you know, she's his granddaughter is running is the head brewer there now. But I mean, there's going to be a whole bunch of second and third generation brewers coming yeah. up in the next, in the future. Yeah. So it's awesome. Yeah. What um, what got you into brewing? So a buddy of mine got to give a shout out to Mr. Frank Barker. Um, he and a buddy of his were brewing one day, mm-hmm. and so another friend of mine, Steve, we went over there. They were brewing. We both were like, "You make your own beer." <laughs> So, of course, we go and we start reading about it. And when my wife and I were first dating, we were in Austin and she actually took me to Austin Homebrew Supply Mm. and bought me all the gear, the pot, the burner, Uh um, the carboys, my first kit, which was an amber. Um, And and that that was it, man. It was... On like Donkey Kong. It, there, uh, that store, Austin Homebrewers. You walk in, and it, it just the way the lighting or something, the way it all kinds of shines down on all the gear and everything. Oh. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's very. Have you ever been in there, Mike? Uh-uh. It's very much like is that, that. Just the name of it, or or is it in Austin? No, it, it's Austin Homebrew Supply. Yeah, it's they, in Austin. Yeah. Oh, okay, it is in Austin. I don't know. I, somebody else there. bought it. I, I still. I think it is still locally owned in Austin, but 
Okay. It's not the original. You, you get there? Yeah, no, that's fine. Oh. Well, the guys that owned Austin Homebrew, I don't know if they still do. You know, they they started Rognus Brewing. Yeah. In, uh, I think, Fred, Fredericksburg or, some, I don't know, somewhere around there. Yeah. Pflugerville. Pflugerville, yeah. yeah. Pflugerville. <laughs> you know, I think, he's, I think he sold Austin. Or maybe he still owns. He's he's not doing the brewing anymore. He took a hiatus or something. They're going to rename. I don't know what the whole story was. I have to get into, dig into that. I don't know. But, it, but it's a cool shop. Yeah. yeah. I've, yeah. I've only been to the brew shops here. Oh yeah, you you owe it to yourself to go uh, next time. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Lighting, lighting's everything. Okay. I've I've kind of nerded out on li- on lighting. Yeah, it's gone in stages. Like beer was like my first real deep dive into nerding out, like books and videos, and then home brewing, and then it turned into all of this. But lighting is kind of my new. Actually, lighting is my current thing. I've started dabbling in like looking into like butchery, like Boom. like beer, like uh, like like beef, <laughs> like butchering. Like cuts of beef, shoot, of an, shoot a deer and then practice. Maybe. I know, or a hog, it's, right? Yeah, it's coming up, right? There's, yeah, there's so many. Well, Fall, you can maybe, you can, you can shoot a hog anytime. Yeah, so. you can. Yeah, we got hogs right down the road here. Mm. At least we used to. I, I saw know. Cody the other day in this neighborhood. Nice. Two of them up on ninety nine. Really, just hanging out. Oh. Now, Brian, do you do you live locally? <laughs> I do. You live. He's getting us back on track. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, yeah, I, I live uh, live about ten minutes from here. Okay. So. Which it's it's good uh, just being able to come up here and, and do things, uh, especially when something breaks. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's real nice to be able to just come up here and take care of business. And I know uh, Joshua said that you are a Marine, yes, correct? Former Marine. Uh, I served uh, 1997 to 2001 at Camp Pendleton. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm very, very patriotic, as I you see, can see from yeah, the flags. Yeah, I noticed that the uh, first time we came in here a few months ago. Um, yeah. Mike, so you, Mike's an Army vet. Yeah. Well, thank you for your service. Th- thank you. Thank Absolutely. You. <laughs> um, is this full-time? This is full-time, yes. Okay. Um, I, so I got my start in IT when I was in the Marine Corps. Uh, once I transitioned out, I was working for a couple corporations um, and did that for about 10, 12 years. And then uh, I was actually working full-time in an IT position when we started the process for opening Wicked Boxer. And as we got closer to opening... I just looked at my wife and I said, look, if we want to go 2017, we were in the middle of build out. I was getting all the equipment up, had to make the beer. Mm. I said, if you're okay with it, we can let, let, cut me loose and let me, let me do my thing. And she was very, very accommodating. And yeah, yeah ever since I've, this is it, full time. full time for you. Typically awesome. seven days a week. Yeah. 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 That's, um, so what, from the home brewing, so, you know, you, you went into Austin Homebrew Supply and then now we're sitting here. What was that? What was the journey? What was it like? Was it pretty quick? You were just like, oh, this is. Oh, no. Uh, so I homebrewed for about 10 years. Okay. Um, and, you know, like you said, it, it was a dream that we'd kind of play around with. Uh, but at the time, they didn't have the current laws in place to mm-hmm. where you could open up a brew pub. Yeah and serve directly to, to consumers. So it was, it, it was a money thing, like big time. It's like, you know, millions of dollars to open up a facility mm-hmm. and do distribution and all that. So that died very quickly. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't even remember how I got back into the, the beer scene and started following the, the law changes. I think it was uh, Jester King when they really started pushing for changes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and then it, it was I, I was bored at work and I really I really just wanted to try to see how far we could get uh-huh. and uh, I just told my wife I said look let me let me just see how far we get and if we make it we make it if we don't we don't and this was while I was still working so we yeah. we had money coming in and as we got closer and we kept making it through roadblocks and we just day by day and month by month and then I was like okay so we could potentially open like next month she's like okay (laughs) this is going to happen let's do it yeah um and and the community support has just been ridiculous i mean it's exceeded our expectations yeah it's it's just fun i mean i love beer i love making beer but when someone comes in i had a a gentleman come in a couple days ago and he was asking me about the wiggle butt if there was any honey in there actually had three different people ask if there was honey in there and I said, no, it's it's the grain bill and it, it's the yeast. That's where all the flavors coming from. 
and he is getting into home brewing and he said, well, I want to try to mimic this recipe. And I was like, wow. <laughs> whoa. Blown, yeah. 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 I mean, it's, it, it's, it's crazy. It's amazing. So I was like, okay, so we, we might have a pretty good thing going on here. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's one of those things when you've, when you've been doing something for a while and then you find somebody that's like, that in, enjoys like your product or whatever. <laughs> Gravity still in effect today. That's the third time he's dropped that iPad today, so. You know what? They're, these cases are, are everything. We had, I made the mistake, we got this free iPad when we got our phones, and we didn't put a case on it right away, and we're out in the backyard, and I'm like, yeah, you can watch whatever. Boom. Walk, just walking in, dropped it right there on the concrete, shattered. Smash cut, now everything has a big rubber coating on it. Yep. Everything well, in my life. But, it was free, right? Huh? You said it was free? Well... <laughs> marketed as free I don't know yeah. you know there was some monetary to it I don't I, know how much I had to spend to get that free iPad yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had to spend like $4,000 on a phone to get this free iPad right yeah <clears throat> but um, no I can say from uh, well personal experience and talking to my neighbors because literally my front door is about two minutes that way people are excited that you're here and uh, we've come hung, hung out with friends here on the weekend. You know, there's people, we brought a table and chairs. People are out here. You got the food trucks, the barbecue truck you had here this past week. It was really good. Yeah. Um, it, it's been needed out here. People uh, who listen to this podcast are all mostly in the Houston area. But when they think Cypress, they think Cypress 10 years ago. Right. Because they don't get out of here that often. No. And Cypress used to be this kind of a podunk. I want to, uh, maybe not. Well, yeah, kind of country, like the outskirts yep. of, Ex- you know. Yeah. Yeah, Fairfield used to be called Farfield because yep. there was nothing out here. Yep. But smash cut to today, I mean, there was what two hundred fifty thousand people in Cypress alone or something like that. I don't know if it's that many, but it's it's six figures for yeah. sure. And this place is blowing up, and we got breweries now. Yeah, that's pretty badass. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. awesome. You're the first brewery in Cypress. We are the first you, brewery in Cypress. That's pretty cool. Yeah, because you it, there's going to be others. That was another push to get open quick because we knew of some that were up and coming. Um, and we, we had talked to them, um, actually twisted acre. They came yeah. in here, they hung out for a couple of hours. We, I showed them around, they asked questions cause they were starting up. Mm-hmm. Um, and I knew where they were in the process and I was like, man, just, just stick with it. Cause yeah. you, sometimes you just get to a point to where it's an unforeseen, uh, issue mm. and you're just, you're like, okay, I just, there, there's got to be a way around it. We've gotten this far. We, mm-hmm. we got to figure it out. So, yeah, so we wanted to push and uh, be able to have that tag of the first because once you're the first, I mean, you're always going to be the first. Right. You, know? you, you can't always be the newest or right. the latest, but you can always be the first. Always. And so you're the St. Arnold of Cyprus. Yeah. <laughs> so we're the first and the smallest in yeah. Cyprus, Texas. Yeah. I think, well, you're the, I guess you would be the smallest in the greater Houston area. Probably. Maybe Beerfoot may be doing the same scale if you you know down in Galveston if you but that's that's pretty far that's like an hour and a half from here it's too far yeah I don't know if it's too far not too far are they open or are they in the process no they've been open for a while I don't know they're okay so I don't if you've not been to Beerfoot they're it's just like a scale like a one barrel system or right. maybe even like small I don't know but um, they'll bring in guest brewers from time to time they serve mo- mostly other people's stuff I believe oh okay um, so. I don't know. I it's been a while. I need to get back down there. Galveston. It's far. It's it's close, but again, it's, you know, yeah. it's far when you're just living life. Yeah. Uh, there's there's so many breweries that we haven't been to I'd say 90% of the breweries in Houston just cuz we've been here. Yeah. So, we have to go out of town to go to breweries. Mm-hmm. So, we just came back from Boston and we hit up about 10 breweries. Yeah, I'm stalking you. Is I mean, that, uh, following on Facebook. Were they, were they yeah. uh envious. You went to Dogfish Head, right? Yeah, it's a uh, funny story. So we were, the original plan was to fly into, um, had a connecting flight in D.C. We were going to fly to Vermont. We were going to go to the Alchemist. I was going to get me some Heady Topper. Yeah. We missed our connecting flight. So we decided to drive to Delaware from D.C. How far was that? I know it's kind uh, of far. About two hours, two and a half hours. How many so it's like from here to Austin. Yeah. 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 Crossing like. 10 states. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it was about four or five. Four. Yeah. Um, They're so adorable, those little states. Yeah. <laughs> so we got to Dogfish, uh, one of my bucket list breweries, and uh, it was amazing. Yeah. It was, we went on the the free tour, um, showed us around, showed us their 200 barrel brew house. Wow. And their uh, 100 barrel small batch <laughs> brew house. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
so we bought a couple flights before the tour, had some really awesome beers, um, and then you get a free taster. So we did two more flights. Um, and yeah, I got me some 120 from the source. Nice. nice. So it was, so hey. after, so after that, then we drove up the coast. Um, my wife did all the driving. We drove from Delaware, um, to Brooklyn, New York. Cool. So we ended up at Brooklyn Brewery about 9 PM. Nice. Um, and then from there we drove to, uh, Connecticut just to spend the night. And then we drove on to Boston and then, uh, went to Trillium. Uh, went to Treehouse, and if you guys haven't been to Treehouse, they have a very interesting setup. Yeah. Uh, beautiful, so, beautiful facility. Is it a treehouse? It is not a treehouse, <laughs> uh, but it is on what looks like a nature preserve. Mm -hmm. It's kind of tucked away, but they only do tap room service on Tuesdays and Saturdays. So we were there on a Friday. <sighs> so they do can sales. Mm. So it was about a hour long wait to get the cans mm -hmm. and I mean they're just pumping them out but you can't drink the cans there <sighs> it's for offsite only so you, they have this beautiful facility with hundreds of people mm -hmm. spending hundreds of dollars at least and you can't drink it and you can't drink it there but I brought it back yeah I should have brought one we could have split one I know right well what could have been yeah but the story was beautiful thank you <laughs> I, I just I have the coast and the driving through I just have I know, it all right, right here. Right, it's just beautiful. And these, I'm sure it's funny. He went. You went to Treehouse. Yep. Dogfish Head is the one with the Treehouse. Correct. Did you get uh, to go up in the Treehouse? No, it was locked. No. Oh. Yeah. Mm. But that was just cool being there. Yeah. And, uh, were, were were all the um, the Boston ones? Because I, I think about it too. Like I want to take a a summer trip. Go up there. Maybe watch a a Stroh's game one summer in Boston, and just you know maybe hit a, the series or whatever. You know, when, depending on what falls. When we get the short bus. The tour bus, yeah, and That's then we'll do it, and we'll we'll do all kinds. So of I'm, I'm imagining all the breweries in Boston. Kind of, are they concentrated in one district type area, or do you kind of? I mean, I know no, they're all over. We actually okay. went to one in Southie. So if you've seen The Departed, mm -hmm. they're Southie. So uh, Dorchester Brewing, they're about two years old. Uh, they had an interesting story as well. Um, they have a thirty barrel, but they do a lot of contract brewing. So they brew their own, and then they have about three or four other breweries that come in and use their gear to make the beer so um they, and they actually bought us our beer so we would wear our, our shirts and just kind of talk about you know we're six months old in cyprus real small and we're not expecting anything i mean we're there to drink beer so we're right. going to be a patron um so there were about two or three breweries that bought our beers and then we just bought some shirts and you know paid it back and hung yeah. out and so yeah so there uh dorchester is about two years old really cool spot um they actually had a um an adoption event for dogs when we went so that Perfect. was that was very fitting yeah yeah um did they peg you as a texan right away that like they do no, some, I, don't, I can't do a no, Boston accent to say no <laughs> no um everyone they, they always ask me where so where are you from are you from here if if i'm behind the bar and i said yeah you know i was here uh moved here when i was five i was born in florida oh well, you don't have a, you don't have a draw i'm like no because <laughs> Even though my tech, my my parents are from Georgia and Tennessee, it's we're not we're not country folk. Yeah, <laughs> I'm civilized, damn it. <laughs> not really. Yeah, no, we don't. We I don't hear anything normal. And then my my wife, she she was born and raised here, but she doesn't have a a draw at all at all. It's any funny. Means. It's fu so. like some people get it, and then some people yeah. some people get it hard. Like my sister, Kim. 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 I grew, Kim. Up in, grew up in Arkansas. Uh, oh, yeah. And when you call her and leave, and she doesn't get to her phone in, in time, hey, y'all. It's Kim. This is Kim. <laughs> leave a message and I'll call you back. God bless you. <laughs> and that's how she talks all the time. And I'm like, when did that turn on? Sometime after I moved. I don't know. Because I don't remember that. I remember a lot of get out of my room, but it was not, it didn't have that, that sweet accent with it. You know, it's like. You were you were not as you were not as gen genteel when I was a young lad, and you were yelling at me to get out of your room. She's five years older, so I was constantly just of course harassing. Of course, um, born in Florida. Where in Florida? Uh, Fort Walton Beach, so right by Destin. Uh, we're actually going back to Florida in a couple of weeks. Okay, uh, Tampa. So it's kind of good segue, kind of back to the brewery. Um, the name Wicked Boxer, Wicked is our homage to the Northeast. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife, Jamie, she uh, went to Boston University okay. Ah, okay. for her undergrad and graduate um, full-ride scholarship playing softball. Oh, nice. nice. 
then a couple years ago, she actually got inducted into the Hall of Fame wow. for softball. So she's for the college or the, yeah. the university for the university. Oh, yeah, Boston nice. University Hall of Fame. Um, so she's badass. Yeah, nice. Uh, yeah, so we, I was actually in an IT class, texting her names, of, for the brewery. And of course we have two boxers, so we wanted boxer in there. And I'm like, what about uh, like, like mean boxer or naughty boxer and no no and i'm like what about wicked boxer and she's like that's it she's like that's awesome i'm like all right that's a, yeah it sounds there we go just comes off co- yeah. comes out the mouth i bet in boston when people say it, it, it had that full boston snap that wicked that well, oh that's wicked it? yeah that's a wicked pisser yeah <laughs> yeah oh they loved wicked. it we 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 met uh, obviously some people from the boston area as we were drinking beer and they just they they dug it. I was actually wearing this shirt, our Wicked Runner shirt. Yeah. And they're like, ah, Wicked Runners, I like it. <laughs> yeah. So they they but you misspelled it. <laughs> yeah. Wicked. Yeah. How, Wicked. How, how how do you think they would spell it? They would just spell it normal. That's just how they say it. He's it's phonetic, well, right? Yeah, you got to spell it phonetically so people say Runners. Right. But in Boston, oh, they, they like, just would be like, you misspelled Runners. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> what, dumb Texan, you're an idiot. <laughs> Oh, I, 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 now I see it. Yeah. See it. yeah. Runners. 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 Yeah. Runners. Yeah. N-A-H-S. Okay. Yeah. That's funny. So, yeah. That's so they, a little jab at the... Anyway. Yep. Hilarious. Yeah. So it's, it's good stuff. Um, so family in Florida? Is that... Um, not anymore. Um, all the family is here. Uh, but yes, my grandparents, uh, they all live there okay. at one point in time. And so we would vacation there yeah. uh, growing up and then... We've started going back because my wife has a, a friend from college that actually lives in the Tampa area. Cool. So that's where we're going. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, there's some good breweries in Florida, too. Yeah. Uh, all the best, like, crime stories come out of Florida. Oh, yeah. What's if, up with that? If you ever listen to the buzz, man, it's like the crazy criminals. Yeah. Always from Florida. It's either Florida or Germany. Yeah. I don't know. I think, Ger- I don't know if Germany is the Florida of Europe or if Florida is the Germany of America, but... There was a guy, I just, a story I just read today where he got pulled over and they said, you've been drinking and driving. He's like, nah, he had a, he had a bottle of uh, Jim Beam or something on the side. He's like, no, nah, I was just taking swigs at stop signs and red lights. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, double That's not funny. <laughs> he's like, I wasn't drinking and driving. I was just, I was driving. And then drinking. Then I would take a drink. <laughs> and so I was like, he's from Florida. I'm being sure enough, Yeah, sure enough, Florida. Double the legal limit, so... Way to commit to your craft. Yeah. Is it really? What? Double the... Oh, he, he was. He was. I thought you were saying that that was the state law. I was like, no. wow. Yeah, they... They're just... It's, a, it's like a state of bumper cars, don't yeah. they? <laughs> we're at point .16. We're good. Yeah. You know, it, everything's kind of downhill towards Miami anyway. So you yeah. just feel you'd coast to where you're trying to go. Yeah. And the water will stop you eventually, so it's fine. It's fine. You can only go so far. I don't know. I've only been to Florida a couple times. Yeah. I, I imagine that's how it works. Um, let's talk beer for a second. Well, more seconds. Another second. Your wheelhouse. What are your favorite beers to drink style-wise and that sort of thing? I'll be cliche. I mean, I like IPAs. Um, I can drink those year-round. Um, but for me, I like I like more malty IPAs. Okay. Um, but I'll drink like a West Coast style. Or Obviously, being in Boston, I drink a lot of New England, mm. um, which prior to going, I was kind of on the fence i i would get whatever was around here Mm -hmm. Uh, but they make some really good beers yeah Um, i really like i'm really liking that style so (laughs) i might might give it a shot myself just to try it the uh new england ipa craze is big in houston is it as are they as big on it in new england or is it just like that's just an i you know that's they've been doing it for a while i don't how does it translate? Because I feel like there's a lot of them around here now. I mean, up there, they just call them IPAs. Okay. <laughs> um, and even like at Treehouse, their pale uh-huh. um, is basically a, a New England style. I mean, it's cl- it's cloudy. Yeah. It's hazy. Uh, but yeah, it's they're just IPAs. I wonder how long that's... Like, have they just been doing it that way forever and we just found out about it and figured it out? Just Pro- took the internet a while? Yeah, probably. Is, is, is there like something that we do down here? Oh, that's a Texas IPA. They call it like a, so a Southern IPA or it's something. The, people have tried. I mean, it's like to give it the moniker, like a Texas the Texas Brown Ale. I think is kind of a real, a real style, or at least it was. I don't know if it's like a GABF recognized. Or, yeah, I don't know. I've, but mm. I don't know. I don't what, know either. What would it be? Like a Texas something you could drink when it's hot and muggy. So 
which is hardly i'm sure it never is in the north so I don't know. They wouldn't want to. Well, the week after we left, they had a heat wave come through, and it was like in the 90s. Really? And they don't have air. Most of them don't have central AC. That's crazy. So they were hurting. Struggling. Yeah. Yeah. For a little bit. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 When it hits them in like New York City, and that's that's people people hurt because they're not not ready for it. Yeah. It's like when it drops below 40 here. Yeah. (laughs) And we're like, oh my gosh, so cold. Yeah. We were up there, and they're like, man, the humidity is horrible. I'm like, it's 40%, (laughs) and it's 70 degrees outside. Yeah. Yeah, it feels great. I, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. Sw- you have to swim when you walk out the front door. Yeah, it's how muggy. You're it. not taking three changes of clothes with mm-hmm. you. Yeah, it really is. Before you get to work. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You just do. You got to. Uh, I keep a spare shirt in the car. You know, just if I know I'm going to be out, and then I have to go to work or something. Yeah. I keep, yep. you know, always keep a shirt. Got to be ready. Yeah, a little deodorant, a little wipe down. Doesn't really help. About five minutes later, you're. So I know you said uh, you're full time here. You, you're so you're not doing any home brewing. I guess this is pretty much your 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 home brewing is your business now, right? Yeah, this is it. So if if there's a style that I haven't done or there's something I want to try, I just I just brew it and then I I use the the locals to say yay or nay. Um, good example is the uh, the 1983 mm-hmm. so Hefeweizen uh, that I did for my wife's birthday. So she was born in '83, Cinco de Mayo baby. And uh, so we released that on her birthday, and it was a hit. So I brewed it again, and then I've got it fermenting for the third time. Cool. So that we'll make that a, a summer seasonal because it's easy drinking, yeah. Yeah. good flavor. Yeah. That's what a uh, going forward, you know, you got you jumped into it, you pushed hard to get open. What's the what's the grand plan? Like, if, if I think we want I think we want to go smaller. Mm-hmm. Um, like a 15 gallon system <laughs> okay wow that's a <laughs> no. he's a trend breaker yeah <laughs> um no uh we're we're actually looking at some locations around cyprus uh we want some more space for tap room um more bigger equipment we want to do some distribution but nothing too huge because we want to bring people here mm-hmm. um so yeah we want to stay local mm. I'm not looking to be St. Arnold overnight. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, even if we stayed in the nano sense of like a three and a half, four barrel system, Mm -hmm. that would be good because I would keep the one barrel. So that would become my pilot system, two and my one offs. And then, you know, if I could pump out four barrels of wiggle butt in one shot, I'd be on cloud nine, man. I'd be, man, that's awesome. Only have to brew this once a month. It's amazing. (laughs) Yeah. Not once a week. Once you start brewing more, though, more people are going to be lining up to get yeah, it. Yeah, and, and, and that's okay. That's all right. Um, my uh, my bucket list of what we would want is actual air conditioning. Even though, <laughs> even though I mean, we're my wife and I, we're both Texans, and you know, we, we would go to Southern Star when they opened, and it was just a warehouse with mm. no fans. And so, I mean, we get it, uh, but it's, it's a nice selling point. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, really just the people that are behind the bar, not myself, because I, I could care less, but if my wife's up here, if we get some actual staff to help out during the week, um, you know, I want them to be comfortable. I yeah. want our people to be comfortable. They're drinking beer. Um, and then we want to have some space where we can have food trucks and not taking up parking. Just kind of our own little sanctuary, if you will. Okay. When I, when I was here, uh, God, when was it? It was a few months ago, at least. Um, the uh, your servers were 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 two elder. Uh, those were those were my parents. Okay, uh, yeah. a man and a woman. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. All right. yeah, it looks great for their age, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, In case they listen. Older. Yeah. Just yeah. Older. So so they were helping out on um, usually Fridays and Sundays. I think it's probably a Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Sounds about right. Uh, so they they bought a house in the back of the woodlands. So they moved about twice as far time wise. So it's about an hour one way for them to get here. Mm-hmm. So. We kind of gave them a break. Yeah. Now we just have them watch the kids if we're not going to be here, and we get someone closer to help out. Mm. So, so it's just you and the wife, pretty much, or do you have like a, a a nice family relative or a good friend that you could put back there? I I do have some friends that would help out. Um, we do pay them when we ask them to help <laughs> out. Um, just because I mean it, it, it's a lot. I mean it's sometimes it might be slow and it's easy money. Other times it might be a little more busy and you know they'll they'll work for it. So, right. um, but yeah, right now my wife helps because she, she's a school teacher, so she's off for the summer. Oh, nice! But once school is back in, 
and she's coaching a couple times a week. That'll be Gone. that'll be interesting. Yeah. So we're uh, coaches softball, I assume. No. So she actually so she teaches at Hopper Middle School um, and coaches. Uh, she'll do track, cross country, and volleyball. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So volleyball will be new this year, so that'll be a big time commitment. So we'll we'll figure that out. Is, is that high school? No, middle school. Middle school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're venturing into middle school this year. My oldest will be sixth grader. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, she's been teaching for this will be her twelfth year. Mm. So she's got about thirty more to go, and then she can retire. <laughs> <laughs> Would is she as into beer as you are? Um, I converted her when we first started dating. Yeah. So. Not as much, but she she'll appreciates it. it. Yeah, she'll try it. She doesn't like hoppy beers or anything bitter, but she liked the New Englands, and then she likes double IPAs just because the alcohol. Yeah, yeah <laughs> kind of. Not 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 because not because <laughs> of the a, alcohol. We get it. She's a teacher. It's fine. <laughs> she, she really she, she she doesn't drink that much. I mean, maybe one or two beers a week. I'm like. <laughs> She's like, I feel horrible when I'm done. I'm like, it's because you don't drink enough. Yeah. <laughs> you got to build it up. Yeah. You it's, commit. Like, it's like working out or running. You have <laughs> to, you got to build your system. Yep. <laughs> your liver needs working out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My wife, of, go ahead. I was going to say, my wife is also a big double IPA fan. Mm. But she loves anything. Hoppier, the better for her. So mm. I don't know what that means, but. It's weird. Yeah. Anyway. I saw, I, I, I noticed uh, when I was driving up the, uh, talking about the workout stuff, the. Yeah. Uh, the CrossFit okay. guys, yeah. Do you, yeah. Do you know those guys that come over? Or how's that relationship I, work, working out? I, I do know. We actually owned a CrossFit gym uh, a couple years ago. We had a gym for about three years here in Cyprus, and when we were first starting this venture, we tried to do it at the location we were at, but the landlord wouldn't allow it because mm. insurance reasons. Yeah, short-sighted. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was kind of how we started. We're like, hey, if we could do like a CrossFit gym with a brewery that would be awesome so it was kind of funny that the space opened up and yeah so those guys when we first opened in december they came down for their christmas party um so they were going back and forth they'd come get a a plastic cup filled up and then they'd walk down there and come back and get another set yep come back yeah crossfitters yeah hardcore i mean you got to stay hydrated while you're working out exactly god it's a must yeah Yeah. it's a must yeah you're also right next to a tattoo place have they offered up any like (laughs) Uh, we actually had some coasters at one point. They're all gone now, but they had some in their shop, and it, that actually brought some people over. Yeah, we've also had people come to us, and then they would go over there and schedule a tattoo, <laughs> or go get a tattoo. Yeah, while while, um, while here, come yeah. out and get a beer. Yeah, all bandaged up. <laughs> yeah, nice. we actually had a guy come over who uh, he had some work done, and he came over and he he was bandaged up, and he was showing some ladies at the bar, and you know it's all like glossy and puffy and yeah they're like oh my god he's like what it didn't hurt i need another beer <laughs> <laughs> okay. that's good business business is good around here yeah yeah business it's good. good can i uh, something i just observed oh now i don't know the, the, the facility we're in because we're also got a jujitsu place right down here as well not anymore they're no gone. one no they done yeah, they they've moved. been they've been gone for a while. Oh, yeah, they closed they? they closed down like right after we opened. Really? Yeah, that's it's a um, now they do they build furniture for um, like model homes and stuff. Oh, okay. Like, gotcha. they, Same guys. <laughs> they just oh, they just started yeah, making same, yeah. making furniture. And yep. Like if you walk in, I'll make you a a, a bench, and I'll throw in a free choke out. If yep. You, <laughs> yeah. Or an arm bar. You choose. Yeah. No, I don't know. They do like two minute matches. Oh, yeah. you want you want to, you get ten percent if you can survive for two minutes. <laughs> yeah, if I make you tap, yeah, you pay full you, price. You gotta buy you gotta buy the ottoman yeah. as well. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and they're in their geese with their belts. Yeah, the tool belt. Yeah, black a black tool belt. A black tool belt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a funny thought. Yeah. Mash up. I didn't realize they were closed. I didn't. Where are we going with that story? Though? Well, I was gonna say is that because on this back side it's more fun, you know, with the tattoo part of the a brewery and CrossFit, and then in the front. It's all business. It's all business. So it's like a mullet. It is like a mullet. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. business in the front, party in the rear. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And people people don't realize that we're back here. Uh, they they think that from the front, it's whatever business it is, it goes all the way through. Mm-hmm. Even though we have a sign there, so people will just drive back and forth in the <laughs> in the front. Uh huh. And they come in, and I'm like, you know, there's you can turn 
<laughs> on either side. So if you just follow it around, uh-huh. and, and, and I, if, go ahead. If you see the the big ass fan yeah, and no, the you, people holding beers, you're, you made it. You yeah. And Rogue's face, our dog. Yes, yeah. he's on the on our placard. Cover. So yeah. if you see his face, you're in the right spot. Yeah. So that's weird that there doesn't. There's not like a front. Like there's no connecting. Well, I think some of them do, right? Does anybody? Connect? Yeah, like the uh, the CrossFit gym, they go all the way through. Um, well, they have like they're just garage doors, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And then the the auto place at the end, they go all the way through. Huh. Um, so is there is there someone behind you then? Yeah. So behind us is actual uh, a hair salon. And oh. when we first got in here, I had asked about because this used to go all the way through. Mm-hmm. Uh. So I had asked about that space, but it had already been leased. Gotcha. So, so that's okay. That, so it does go through. It does go through. They yeah. Just, they actually had to our brew house. They had there. It used to be a doorway, and they had to okay. put a piece of sheet metal up. To, okay. It all makes sense now. Yeah. It all makes sense now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, when you talk about expanding and stuff, and you've said you've been looking around. Especially for the people who are, I'm going to say, hyper, hyper local that listen to this podcast. People in Fairfield, here's a shout out. Um, what can you, where would you like to be? Where would you? Um, we would like to be, I mean, if there was something that opened up on Mushki, that would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe just on the other side of 290. I know right now people hate that. I hate it myself having to go on the other side, but. <laughs> Um, if there was anything like right there, um, and just anything kind of around like Parker Cypress, Spring Cypress, just kind of in that, nothing, nothing like five edge of five twenty nine. Mm-hmm. That's technically Cypress, yeah. not out that far. I mean, even Jones Road is technically Cypress, nothing that far. So we're still trying to stay within probably a ten minute drive of where we're at right now, if possible. I wonder what what is going to go just across 290 like when you get down to mason there's just nothing out there yet yeah and everything that's been it's been blowing up out here so you got the outlet mall and all this stuff i mean when we moved out here there was nothing right we moved down here in 2002 and it was just there was a farmhouse where the outlet mall is and a yeah. big open field and you'd see like herd of deer come in at night and you just drove right off of 290 into the neighborhood there was no like feeder roads or yeah. anything um and just all that land is still there so I don't know. Who, any? Have you heard anything? Any juicy rumors? No, I haven't. I mean, you know, anything off of 290, if it's not warehouse space, is obviously going to be fairly pricey. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's prime real estate. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, we're just, it's one of those things where you just have to look every day. Yeah. I wish, maybe we can talk to Fairfield about loosening some of the HOA rules. The house next door to me is for sale. And maybe we can just tuck you in. That would right. be right there that would be interesting it would be I don't, interesting i don't i don't think uh the feds would appreciate that but mm, i mean the beer drinkers would yeah. well yeah they would yeah we don't need to our tell blo- the feds our block parties <laughs> would be epic at I that just, point I just, you know we'll just have like a four thousand square foot house that looks normal but inside it's just gutted there are people that have <laughs> used that business model for other things yeah and they seem to be making some pretty good money off of it until i don't think in in fairfield though I don't know. I don't know if there's been any grow houses that have been a production facility. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like grow, <laughs> like houses? grow houses. Yeah, there, there's actually there's. I don't know about in Fairfield. There's been some shady stuff going on. Like our, we had at our old house in Fairfield, we had a guy a few houses down that had like bomb making material and stuff. Mm. And uh, yeah, interesting story. Okay, so I'm outside taking down the Christmas lights. So it was like March, and so I'm, <laughs> <laughs> March or April somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he comes walking down and she's got a gun in his hand, and he's like. This was years ago. But he's like, hey, did you see anybody run out of my house? I, and I'm like in the tree. And I'm like, nope, Ned, <laughs> nope, not seeing anybody. Just me and these lights. I mean, I did and he went that way. Don't, you know, it wasn't me. So he's like, all right. And I'd never talked to him before. Um, but anyway, so he goes looking around and then I'm like, okay, that was, that was crazy. Like I go inside, call my wife. I'm like, oh my God, the dude just came. He just had, he had a gun in his hand. I don't know. Anyway. So one morning we're out of uh, breakfast stuff. My, the girls were little. I mean, they were like still in diapers and everything. Yeah. And so we were out of milk. So my wife's like, well, we don't need breakfast stuff. Go get us kolaches. So I'll go to get kolaches at the front of the neighborhood and come back. And the whole street is blocked off by you know, sheriffs, FBI. Couldn't, and so 
my the road goes right into my driveway and they stopped me. I'm like, my house is right there. And this FBI just I need scream, to get my he's screaming at food. me. He was screaming. He's like, stop right there. It's like, don't go any further. I'm like, oh my God, what did I do? Like, and they, they had it all blocked off. And then this other local guy was like, hey, what do you need? I was like, well, I'm trying to get my car right there. He's like, you can't come in here. I'm like, well, my house is right there. And I, then my, at that point, my wife and the girls are standing at the front door waving. So they're like, you know, I have like a two year old and like, or a two and a half year old and like babies. Oh, yeah, babies that are just down there. Hey, daddy. And they're like, what's going on? And my wife's like, can he just bring the kolaches? <laughs> we just want our food. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, the, you know, he, the local, he, he got it and took it over there. So your car the, had to stay. But I, yeah, I, I just sit there and, and until they let me get into my driveway, which was literally just across the Were street. Were you able to walk home? No, they wouldn't let me in. Wow. Uh, yeah. But turns out. So they out, just gave you the food. You gave them the food and they gave the food yes, to he, the and girls. he walked it across to the front door. To kill. Yeah. And so they were able to they were <laughs> able to eat breakfast. Oh, wow. And then I was like, I should have brought brought more donuts. This would have been a lot easier. <laughs> right. <laughs> Could have bribed them all. Yeah. But I mean it didn't last that much longer after because but he was building like bombs and stuff. Wow. Apparently he was like a um I don't know, like a wanted? Well the, yes, apparently. He was like a militia type guy uh, on those living, ages. In, living in Fairfield yeah that doesn't he, really fit. he hadn't moved out to the backwoods yet or whatever yeah. they wherever they go but uh, apparently it was something along those lines interesting so interesting yeah older guy too well let's uh let's keep those uh shenanigans I'm just saying if, if something here. crazy were to happen in Fairfield it wouldn't be the first time <laughs> so you know I don't know I figured if, if he had approached it differently maybe things would have been because I thought he was just like a like a like a collector because he had a, a fuselage for it like an old jet like a world war ii jet on the trailer like it's a showpiece you don't have the paint with the face the face painted on the side and everything like a fighter jet mm-hmm. he had that in his driveway i'm like oh he's a collector he's like a arms collector or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the feds swoop in I'm like you know must not have had all that licensing no so he was gonna fill it with gunpowder something i don't know what yeah. he was gonna do interesting fellow there make something go boom yeah well, i'm okay. glad it didn't happen i'm glad everything worked out on that yeah. day for yeah. you and your family yeah other than that all my neighbors are great good <laughs> and i'm sure he was nice he was he you know he seemed nice yeah it just other than the one or two times with the run-ins but whatever anyway so you know maybe we look into fairfield maybe there's a few houses maybe maybe i don't know this is an interesting area though i you, you, i i don't know uh, somebody who's business minded I don't know about you but I, I look at like the real estate all the time to see yeah. what's available and it seems like the same stuff I don't know if they know that you're looking at their stuff but like there's a piece of property over here that I always look at I'm like oh if I could open a coffee and beer spot that would, and put the where at it's right down the street here it's like a that's my spot no it's uh <laughs> just, just right out here it's like a like a nine or ten acre slice of land nice it's got horse stuff on it it's like a just under two million Oh. I'm just short of that. Yeah. <laughs> just out of my price range. And I yeah. asked, he's like, do you want to divide that by a lot? Like, would you be willing to sell this square here? Nah. Yeah. They didn't want to. Yeah, I, I asked. I get on there, too, and I ask him. No, we want to sell the whole 10 acres. Yeah. Okay. They well, don't. You've been listed for like three years. Like, so oh, maybe we're, we're probably right. talking about the same spot right down here on the road down here it's just crazy yeah yeah i don't know what they're waiting on i don't know i don't know and they're like and they, well if we divide it we want more if it's the corner section right off of whatever road i'm mm-hmm. like okay yeah the, give me give me the back section away from the road yeah just and give me a bike trail back there yeah or even just a cow a cow path yeah a lot of cows out there depending on which one we're talking about we're probably talking about there's only two three there's a couple off of uh uh, Cypress Rose Hill further down like mm-hmm. towards 99 there's yeah. a couple tracks but yeah they're the same way yeah and then there was some down here on Mushki but and you gotta watch for flooding right there by the creek it I get yeah. trapped like during Harvey we got trapped yeah so wait when was Harvey? last year almost a year ago has it been a year? Mm-hmm. August August next next month is a year ago yep okay man that's crazy right? yeah I wonder if we're gonna have another one of those this year I hope, I hope not. That, I hope that's one of those parties that we just we don't re- need redo. Yeah. We had back to back floods, so I think we're good. Yeah, for our Ooh. lifetimes. Yeah, right? right. And our kids and their kids. Yeah, so that was crazy. With, good with that. Yeah, but yeah, trapped in the neighborhood. But. So you, so your shirt. You got uh, what kind of <laughs> what kind of? Uh, no, I just uh, you know I like to run too. So what is it like a club here? Y'all do you start here, meet here, look Wednesdays, run here? right? Yeah, Wednesdays. Uh, they start. They go from six fifteen to seven at we night. Are, yeah. Ah. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, 
think it's pretty early to drink beer at 7 a.m. Uh, uh, not <laughs> to run, though. Not to run. No, no not to run. Uh, yeah, so we open to the public at 6. Uh, people will bring their friends that aren't runners, and they will drink beer while they run. Um, and they just run down uh, Shield Road. Uh-huh. And there's a neighborhood that they run into. and Loop around. Yeah, loop around and come back. Or they just run around the building if they don't want to do the full three miles. Okay. Um, then they come back, and usually the people that run, if, if they're beer drinkers, they hang out until we close. So we go 6 to 9 on Wednesdays. Yeah. Um, and then we started doing trivia on Thursdays. Cool. Which has been really awesome. Um, so that goes, again, we open at 6. Trivia goes 7 to, they're usually done around 9, 9.30. So, yeah, we got a couple events during the week. So that's so, so you're open up Wednesday, Thursday? Wednesday, Thursday, um, and then Friday, 5 to 9, Saturday, 2 to 8, Sunday, 2 to 6. So we're open Wednesday to Sunday. Yeah, closed Monday, Tuesday so that I can make beer and clean stuff. But I'm still up here during the day okay. doing things. Yeah, no, it's good. I love it's, it's, I'm, I'm. I get excited. Like when I was telling people I'm coming to do a podcast here. Like going to Wicked Box, like, where's that? It's by my house. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I love it. I love it. Um, okay, we talked about Wiggle Butt. What were you, what are you drinking? Are you uh, downtown? No, so uh, I'm, Black IPA? Yeah, I'm drinking Rogue. Okay. Um, it is named after the face of our company, Rogue. He is our reversed sealed Brendel. That is the technical term. Okay. He's black. Oh. Uh, so when the sun hits him just right, he looks like a really dark brown. Mm-hmm. So a Brendel boxer is the lighter brown with like the darker Stark. markings. Yeah. So he's the reverse of that. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's Rogue, our black IPA. That's what I'm drinking. Um, what else? Um, well, black IPAs, yeah. they had kind of a, they came up for a while. Yep. And then, I, got, I don't know, I don't think they lost their luster. I just think everybody was on to the next, what else are we going to do with IPAs? Yeah. Which seems yeah. to be the trend with IPAs because we've had IPAs or, and then, like, then the distinction between British and American and then West Coast and now East Coast and white IPAs and black IPAs and Belgian IPAs and bread IPAs and I don't know. There's gonna I don't know, but I like black IPAs. Yeah, they're good. I uh, I like them too, and that's why I made it. So, and this is that's one of your uh, seasonals, or is that one of the three mainstays? Uh, no. So this one will will rotate. Rotate. Uh, once it's done, it'll probably be gone for a while. Um, the mainstays, uh, the IPA is Stealth Liquor. Uh, that's another reference to our boxers specifically um as they're walking towards you and you make eye contact and then you look away because you think they're just going to walk by but they walk by turn and lick you in the face (laughs) and then keep on walking Uh, my wife's dog uh that she had when we got together shiloh uh she used to do that so shiloh is downtown shiloh brown Mm -hmm. Um, that was actually a homebrew recipe um it's a brown ale with vanilla Ooh. Um, and I made that beer for our wedding. Mm. So that one has been around for about, how long have we been married? Five years. Yeah. So when we were talking about what recipes we wanted to start with, um, I mentioned just a brown ale. And she said, well, make it like the wedding beer and put vanilla in it. So mm. it's been, it's the Wiggle Butt is our number one. The Shiloh is our number two. Yeah. It's interesting because, me liking IPAs, um, I mean, we, we sell the IPAs, but not nearly as much as the other two mm-hmm. or any beer that's not very hoppy. So I'm learning that our local community, they're not real big hop heads, mm-hmm. which is fine. Yeah. I mean, I'll still make the beers. Um, I'm interested to see if we do a New England style IPA, what the... Um, what what they'll think about that right. because you know they're they're bitter but they're not bitter like a normal IPA yeah. you have some bitterness um, I'm just I'm interested to try that style just because all of the hop additions are ten minutes or less mm-hmm. and then just a ton of whirlpool and then a ton of dry hopping mm-hmm. so it'll be interesting yeah yeah I've, I wanted to I got to add some hops to one. Remember that, yeah, Mike, when we yeah, got to add some hops to one down there at Whole Foods? Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, I guess you could kind of say we're professional brewers now, right? Heck yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> we had our hand in a 
part of the we one. Threw thing. some, threw some hops towards uh, a. Yeah, it was about a picture of it, right? Picture. Yeah. Nice. He yeah, it was the uh, Baba Brewhouse and uh, Whole, Foods, Whole Foods. Their, yeah. their collaboration. Baba, man, they love their New England style. I haven't yeah. had a single one. Yeah. They actually came by um, when we were still <laughs> opening me. up. Um. And yeah, I, I think uh, Brew Thirty had one of their beers on for like a day. Uh huh. So I need to, but their tap room's closed now because they got a new brew house. Yeah, they just got it, got it in. So I'm like, so do I have to go to Brenham just to get your beer anyway? Or, <laughs> I mean, I will. Yeah, there, there's similar until well, they just got a seven. I think he said seven barrel yeah. system, but they were similar setup to what yeah. you've got here. Yeah, I think they were like three. Yeah. Um, and then like Twisted Acre, I think they're doing like a three or three and a half. Mm-hmm. I can't fit a three back there. It's impossible. Yeah. You've already measured and tried. And yeah. And then, like, the power requirements, if you want to go electric, mm-hmm. there's no way I'm doing natural gas in there because it'd be 120 degrees mm-hmm. versus 90 degrees. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you work with what you got. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's been working out great so far. Yeah. I mean, I'm... So far. I'm putting my dues in. So, when we upgrade Pat. to the big three-barrel or whatever it may be, I'll... Uh-huh. It'll be worth it. I, yeah. I think at the scale you're doing it, though, I mean, you're getting in a lot of reps, and you just can't you can't substitute reps, you know? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, even though, you know, any new brew system, there's always going to be a learning curve. But, yeah, this is helping me with, I mean, the, the processes are different. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, going bigger will be nice, but it'll be a completely different whole new learning. learning. Yeah. yeah. That's why. That's why I'll keep this system so that I can continue to brew on it. Because you'll know it and you'll master it. You haven't mastered it already. While I'm messing up, you know, <laughs> three barrel, three barrels of beer, I can still make one barrel really good. <laughs> yeah. So it'll be my uh, my safety net. Now you're just you're just here, right? You're not you're yeah. not on like a brew thirty. You mentioned brew thirty. And it, to me. No. So we're actually um, we're actually going through the um, label approval process with TABC for a couple beers, mm-hmm. um, so that we can get out to a couple places okay Um, nothing big more just for marketing just to get our name out there Mm -hmm. Um, do a couple local spots but then we'd like to go closer to downtown Mm -hmm. just to get get our name out there yeah um just to bring people here until we're bigger and can do some more real distribution yeah that's kind of hitting your hitting some spots like laser targeted yep you know it's it's a form of marketing yeah yeah that'll be good uh Summer intern Hayden, did you have a question for Mr. Brown about the brewery? Do you you like the brewery, right? You've been here a couple yeah. times. Yeah. Any questions? Uh, about, what about like his his the, the sodas they have? Those are good, right? Have you had any of those? Did you have any last time, or did we make you drink water because you ate sugar all day? <laughs> I don't remember. I had a lemonade. Lemonade last time. Yeah. What have you and Ryder been playing on his iPad? Um, he played a minion game. The minion game. Yeah. And he, you got to watch. <laughs> He's playing Connect Four though. Can you, Ryder? You want to come say hi? You want to come over here? Yeah. And speak and talk in the microphone. Yeah. You can sit on my lap, or you can go Either over way. there. Where? Either way. The Connect Four. We uh, we were here. My daughter, my oldest daughter, and I. We were here on Sunday, and we got into a, he- a couple of heated games of Connect Four. Yeah. And uh, we went home, and, and I was like, typically that's our go-to game when we go to a brewery. You can tilt that down. I'll just I'll turn it down while you pull it into place yeah all the knobs there we go perfect um we went home and we played like 10 games of connect four like a round robin in the, in the, with the family so i'm glad you guys have a, you have a you have a well-crafted connect four game now now we actually have uh uno oh um and we're gonna get some other little games we had people bring dice so i told my wife we need to get some dice i don't you know, know if you play dice yeah well you know what a, speaking of a fun game left right center have you ever played that one uh, it sounds familiar. It's okay. So everybody takes out three dollar bill, like three one dollar bills, and you have the dice. And when you roll it, and you can play with as many people as you want. So everybody, like around this table, and so you roll the dice, and you either you if you hit, you can either hit left, right, center, or or keep. So if you hit the left, you you know a dollar to the left, right, and then if you put it in the center, and then you know everybody you pass it around each time, and whoever's left with that last dollar gets all the dollars. But you know it's it's not it's real simple. But you can be out of dollars, and then two people down, they get a left, and then a left, and then you're back in. Right. And so you can win right there at the end. So it gets pretty, gets pretty heated. Intense. Ryder, what do you like about the brewery? Did you, did you help Daddy transfer beer today? You just talk right there. 
got all shy all of a sudden. Yeah, he did. <laughs> What's your favorite part about the brewery? Do you have a favorite? Do you come up here with mommy? Just talk. <laughs> Don't pick that off. Please. It's fine. Someone already did. Yeah. We'll be back a lot. It's fine. We, we'll, we got lots of opportunities for podcasting. Yeah. So. What do you think, man? Do you like this microphone? Is it cool? <laughs> it is. Say, what, mommy's listening. You want to say hi? Say you hi? Say hi. No. no. Strong, silent time. <laughs> Actually, he's running around. Not so silent. He got, yeah, he got silent all of a sudden. Yeah. It's all right, though. It's, it's fine. fine. You don't it's want to tell him about helping daddy? Did you get to flip the, turn the, the knobs today? Yeah. You got you got to say yes though. Look at daddy. This. <laughs> Put your mouth like it and go yes. Maybe later. Yes. No. <laughs> you can't do it. You can't do it. Don't you laugh. Don't do it. Don't do it. Do you, have you helped daddy? Um, did you help daddy scoop grains into a bucket? Yes. Say yes. 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 Yes, we have a yes. excellent Good job. confirmation. He is here. And what's your favorite part when you come up here and help Daddy? The water. The water. The water. The water. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. <laughs> Do we use lots of water? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. A lot of water. We. Um, it's been a little while since I've home brewed, right, Hayden? A long Fair time. while, yeah. But they, they like helping. They'll throw in hops. You ever throw in hops? Yep. They smell good? Do you like the way they smell? They're kind of sticky too, huh? Yeah. What about the grain? You like the grain? You like the way it smells? Yeah. Ooh, do you like the way it smells when it hits the water? Like that smell it comes out, you know? Yeah. Mmm. I bet you that downtown Shiloh Brown smells really good. Do you, do you drink do you drink the uh, the sodas here? No. Do you, do you <laughs> eat snacks? Yeah. What's your favorite snack here? I saw you eating something earlier when we came here. What were you eating earlier? Remember what it was? No. Pretzels? Pretzels? Yep, the pretzels. Say, it's from Klein Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> Klein Brothers. Yeah. Shout out to Klein Brothers. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Gotta have good snacks. Yeah, it's, right. it's a must. It's a, a must. must. So, excellent. Is that a cool microphone? <laughs> yeah. You should... You want to help Daddy start a podcast for the brewery? The Wicked Boxer Hour or something like that? You want to do a, po- <laughs> to do a podcast with Daddy? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll be in talks. <laughs> Let me know. I can help you out. It's what I know. I, I, I know how much I like beer, but then I also know how to do these podcasts. Yeah. I so. have a question. Oh, oh, go for it, please. I have a soda. Into the mic. Huh? I have a soda. Can you have a soda? We'll talk after the show. Okay. Okay. We haven't had lunch yet. Right. Mm. It's getting right up around lunchtime. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Lunchtime, maybe swim time. I heard you guys were going swimming. <laughs> what? Oh, was... At the max, is Napa going swimming? Yep. Yeah. Is he always napping? He's already napping. Well, maybe he's awake now. Maybe. Maybe. What time do y'all need to go swimming? Here in just a few minutes, eh? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll go, go swimming at the cool place where we... Nice. That's where we live. Oh, really? <laughs> Does it have a slide or a diving board or um, anything? Yeah, we, they do have a slide. They have two. Two slides? Ooh, and they fun. have one thing that kids um, shoot water out and s- just get Shoots water people. out. Oh, nice. really? Like a splash pad or what? Um, Yeah, we go to the splash pad. <laughs> splash pads are and awesome. And a different pool, too. And a different pool? Yeah. Yeah, cool. get it. Yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Do you Sounds like the, fun. Do you like the splash pad or the pool better? Pool. What, what's your favorite part about the pool? Jumping in? Jumping in under, yeah. I Jumping in. Do like going under. Do you have, which slide do you like better? Are they, do they have colors? What color um, are the slides? Yeah, do you have colors? A lot of you just go down the little slide. Yeah. Does it twist around? Um, no. Just straight down? No. No. Kind of turny? Um, no. No? <laughs> what does it do? Just no. sli- It's just a slide? Make you go down. Oh, okay. The wall makes you go down. Oh, okay. Cool. Well, those are the best kind. Yeah. Yep. There's a there's a book on on water. If you're interest more interested, uh, John no. Palmer. No. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't want to read. No, it's got some pictures. No. It's 
I'll, I'll be honest with you, though. No. You lost a, them at book. For a book called Water, it's kind of a dry read. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe when they make the movie. No. Yeah, they probably won't make a movie, you're right. <laughs> maybe a TV show. What movie have you been watching? What's your favorite right now? The Incredibles. Let me hear you. Say it louder. Say it in the microphone. The Incredibles? The Incredibles! Yeah! We haven't... The new one? We went and saw the new one. We <laughs> went and saw the new one for the first time. That was his first movie. Oh, nice. We have the original mm-hmm. on DVD that he had been watching just because. And then we saw that the new one was coming out. Yeah. You all done here? Yeah. You went down? <laughs> we were going to watch The Incredibles this weekend, but you couldn't rent it. You had to buy it. And we just couldn't pull the trigger on that commitment. We were able to, we would commit $4, but the 17, we were just like, hmm. So we, I think we ended up renting like three other movies. And yeah. we spent that same amount of money. We watch it on DVD. We have the actual DVD. Mm. Yeah. Old yeah. school. Yeah. Like DVD or Blu-ray? No, it's DVD. DVD. Oh, wow. DVD. It is kicking it old D- school. It's the DVD. DVD. <laughs> have, y'all, have y'all seen the new, or I don't, they're not new, but it's the, uh, the last, last blockbuster. They have a Twitter account. Oh, what? I don't. I don't know if it's like an actual store, but they do all these joke tweets. I think it's still an actual store where you can go rent DVDs and Blu-rays. <clears throat> but they have a Twitter account that's pretty funny, and they talk about you know if we have to rewind one more tape, we're we're gonna then they'll call out <laughs> some individual that didn't rewind. They weren't, they weren't kind. Yeah, they weren't kind. They were not kind. Yeah, What's so it's the dude? last remaining. They're not with the corporate. They're their own entity. So, anyway, that's that's my recommendation for Twitter this week. Follow the last blockbuster. All right. Well, in lieu of uh, of lunchtime, swim time. Oh yeah, swim time. And uh, I, I don't know. All the <laughs> that's a, that that's his little brother. Uh-huh. He's probably getting up. Is he? Oh yeah. Now is he up? <laughs> How old is he? How old is Maddox? Do you know? One. He's one. one. How old are you? Four. Four years old. Four. Four's mm-hmm. a good age. Four. So you're about. So you're starting kindergarten. Or one, more, one more year. One more year. Yeah. Preschool maybe. Yep. Um. Yep. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Preschool's awesome. Kindergarten's awesome too. Kindergarten. Oh, I, yeah. When you get there, man, it's great. <laughs> what about third? Would you recommend third grade? No. Hayden. No. Yeah. Yeah. Once you get there, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going into fourth grade. Yeah, it's going to be an epic year. Epic. Hopefully. Hopefully. All right. We're gonna. Well, yeah, we'll do that. We'll wrap now. How about that? Let's go. Good. Time to go swimming. We're all going swimming at your house. Is that cool? Can we all go and do cannonballs and go down the slide? Well, <laughs> actually, my pool out at the uh, backyard is yucky, so I can't go on yet. <laughs> <laughs> we need to you need to talk to Mike over there. He's got a backyard pool, too. And his, is yours yucky? Or is it good? It's ready to go. Yeah. Well, that, and I'm glad we you got have it. grass in our backyard. Yeah, we don't have a pool anymore. We, this has been moved. That's fine. Is, anyway, all right. Yeah. That's a good good note to wrap on. All right, everybody. Come check out Wicked Boxer. Come on, come on up to Cyprus if you're not in Cyprus. And if you're here in Cyprus and you haven't been yet, you owe it to yourself to get over here. Support Brian and uh, the whole crew here at Wicked Boxer. Uh, open Wednesdays through Sundays and uh, check in with Facebook for events running club on Wednesday nights trivia nights on Thursdays all the fun on a weekend food trucks connect for as we discussed snacks sodas for the kids swag swag all the swag and the delicious beer of course and Brian and me he'll be here <laughs> alright well thanks for listening everybody we'll be back out here at uh, Wicked Boxer I'm sure I'll harass Brian until he lets me come out again and uh, you're always welcome. You don't have to harass me. Okay, cool. <laughs> it we'll only be- took six months for this to happen. So <laughs> I know, I know. It happened though. Bottom line. Yeah, I'll start right. sending messages now for the next time. Right. There you go for the the one year anniversary in December. Get ready for that. Okay, yeah, we'll put it on the calendar now. Yep, yeah. it's gonna be a party. But uh, th- seriously, thank you for letting us come out. Absolutely, this is cool. So every uh, come try a Wicked Boxer and uh, come see the some of the best parts of Cyprus. So uh, for everybody here at the table, Hayden, good job today. Thank you. Mike, good job. Thank you. All right. We'll see y'all next time right here on Inner Brews. This is Inter Brews. 
preceding has been a presentation of Stewed Productions.